Hey, what's going on boys and girls? Good morning. We are doing another tutorial. We have our friend here, Chris, with Onsite Marine. How you doing, Chris? Good, how's it going? Hey. So, Chris, if y'all didn't know, <clears throat> not only does he have a shop in Ruskin, but he does some mobile stuff as well. And yes, sir. this morning, he's gonna be showing us how to bleed the hydraulic steering from your helm and replace it and remove all them air bubbles so that way you have a nice fluid system. So let me ask you, how often do you think this maintenance should take place? Well, two things. If you got a leak, mm -hmm. then you need to go ahead and replace all the fluid in it. Okay. Um, and then you need to repair whatever seals are leaking. I gotcha. Okay. And then um, usually if you start seeing your fluid get darker yep. in color, you need to go ahead and replace it. And I did notice that in mine, it was a little darker. So if you guys aren't aware, instead of buying a brand new boat, this boat would have cost me $200,000. I saved quite a bit of money and bought a used boat, but she only had 23 hours on it in total. But what I noticed is when I was looking at the fluid, it was a little darker, and I figured this would be a perfect opportunity for a professional to show you how to do this, either manually, and he's got a cool trick, so stay tuned to the end. He's got another way to, to really do it and solidify this whole treatment and make sure everything is top notch. So just to reiterate, we're gonna show you the manual method to go ahead and clear this hydraulic fluid. And then we're gonna go over to the premium method and the way that I would suggest that you do it. But either way is gonna work, one's just better than the other. First thing I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna drain as much fluid out of uh, the cylinder and the system as I can, just to get all that old fluid out of it. So we'll get all that old fluid out as much as we can, and then we'll put the new stuff in. And like I said, when it gets dark yeah. like a dark sweet tea or something like that that's when it's time to replace it okay. so because even though it's a closed system it still has a breather on the top okay um and it breathes in air at the top so you, you'll get moisture in it at the top of the the helm or the station yeah. so the top the very tallest station so if you got two stations oh, okay. the top one has a breather the bottom one should not interesting we're gonna put this little tube on and then we're gonna grab a bottle. This is just an empty jug here. Oh, that's actually pretty clever. And then you just open this up. I'm gonna turn this baby over. All right. See all Oop. Now this fluid is a red color. Back in the day, they used to use a automatic transmission fluid, ATF. Oh, okay. Okay. And that's what they used back in the day. Now this boat is pretty new. They shouldn't have been using that stuff at that point. It should be, it should be clear or a brownish color. So yeah, you see quite a bit's coming out. It's still coming. And we're almost half a quart now. So not, I don't see any more filling up this thing. So go ahead and stop. Okay. We'll close this one off. And then we'll move this tube to the other side of the cylinder. In the center, so yep. you, you see this bar here. Yep. Right here in the center, there is a seal. Okay. Okay, so you push fluid on one side of that seal, and it turns it this way. I got it. You push fluid on the other side of that seal, and it turns it the other direction. Interesting. So that seal that sits in here in the center is called a piston, and it stays stationary. It doesn't move. Okay. Um, the only thing that moves is this cylinder. So the more fluid you put on this side of that piston, yep. it moves this way. The okay. more fluid you put on that side, it moves that way. Another thing with these steering systems is if you ever tilt your motor up, you got it tilted up mm. and it falls over to one side, Bruh. that piston seal went bad. Oh, good. Because that's allowing fluid to go to either side. You're not turning the steering wheel, but it just falls over. So at that point, you either reseal it or replace the steering cylinder, um, depending on how old the cylinder is and how much wear is on the cylinder as well. So now we're gonna connect it to the other side of the cylinder, and now we're gonna turn the uh, steering wheel to the starboard side. All right, we climbed up to the top station here, and uh, Chris just wanted me to turn this to the starboard side just to confirm that all the fluid has left the reservoir. and. So far, so good. I have to mention it again, because this is gonna save you a lot of time. Part of the 
the harder process is getting and disposing of the old, old stuff. Oh yeah. And a lot of people might put a pan down and try to work real hard to put it into another container to take it to be disposed of. But Chris he used an old container. Yep. Hook that hose right into here, put the lid on, and how much easier is that going to be to dispose of? Oh, you know? it's, it's a lot easier because you just take your tube out and you know put your cap on, take it to your disposal place, and. You're good to go. And you ain't got to worry about it spilling or, or else. contaminating yeah. any waterway or, you know. You could do this right behind your house, yep. over the lift, over the water, and not have to worry about any drips. All right, guys. So now what we're going to do is we're going to flush a little bit more of that fluid out by just going ahead and connecting a tube to the front here and adding some fresh fluid in and pushing more to the back. Because we're going to hook this hose up here. It's a special hose that fits right into these. Uh, C star or Bay star helms, and it just screws right in the top. It's got the correct thread for it. Hey guys, I'd like to add that you could stop over at Chris's shop right here. What's the address, Chris? It's 1114 North US Highway 41 in Ruskin. All right, so if you need any of this fluid, if you're local especially, and you or you need this tube, you can stop in and talk with Chris to take care of you yes sir so we're gonna just tighten that up a little bit just hand tight you don't have to do anything aggressive so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the fluid and connect it to the top of this tube and then we're gonna puncture a hole in the bottom of this to allow air to get into it because um, if you don't it'll suck the bottle flat and you're gonna have a hard time bleeding it out that way wait till this whole thing fills up with fluid you can see it going into the tube we're gonna wait for the whole thing to fill up with fluid it's gonna take quite a bit because um, we just drained a lot of it out of it you can see it going into the tube and this is nice clear fluid this is how it should look so Chris is there really any difference in the oil um, I mean besides the price so they're all pretty much the same um, they all have the same specs um, C star of course you're gonna they're gonna always say use the C star fluid yeah okay because it's their system they're gonna always recommend their fluid probably a little um, more expensive too but it's like double the cost <laughs> so like this container here is fifteen ninety five and if you get a C star fluid it's like thirty two dollars wow. and some change so it's it's definitely not cheap right at all and um, when you're doing a flush like this you go through quite a bit of fluid. I mean, you're going through three to four co quarts of fluid when you're doing this flush. Wow. So essentially, you're just pumping this this into the system just to flush out the old oil. Correct, so I'm gonna just, I got this system filled up now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go ahead and flush it all the way to the back just to get the rest of the residue and, and grime out of the system. And then we'll start putting the new stuff in. Nice. We're gonna open the valves one more time in the back and dump it into a container again. Yep. So we're gonna turn it to the starboard side and then, then to the port side to get the rest of the fluid out of it. So now we're repeating the process, guys, and hooking these tubes up. And that's what you're seeing Chris do. Uh, ultimately, again, just flushing this old fluid through the system. Open this valve up and you're gonna turn it to the starboard side. Go ahead and turn the wheel. So you can see how much of that red fluid is still in there. And it's starting to get lighter and lighter the more he turns it. Close this off. Uh, just there wasn't no, no more fluid coming through the tube. It pretty much stopped when we stopped turning there. So, okay, so. no more fluid was, was draining into the container. We're gonna do the same thing on this other side. I'm gonna just move the tube over to here. We'll open this up. So I do find it interesting that they have the, you have it turning, so the, the, the thing is on the starboard side, but you have to turn it to the port side. Correct. And vice versa. You, you do it the opposite direction. Okay. All right, so now you're gonna turn it to the port side. And it looks like we pretty much got most of the fluid out of there. We'll try to push a little bit more of this out. Just 
We've got a pretty nice little stream there. Here comes some air. That looks like some dirty fluid right there. Yeah, it's just got a lot of air in it there. This is what happens when you start getting a lot of air in it. It'll start looking darker. All right, Josh, you're good there. Let that finish up here. Now that we got all the fluid out of it, just want to explain one more thing. If you find that you're running your boat and you're turning the wheel and the engine doesn't feel like it's responding, a lot of times that means you got air in the system. Um, so if you got air in the system, usually 90% of the time there's a leak somewhere. Uh, the first place to check for a leak is this cylinder. So all you gotta do is if you got a leak, you just put your hand underneath here and you'll see oil underneath your finger if you got a leak here. So here and here. Same thing with the other side. You do both sides and if you got oil on your finger, then you got a leak in that area um, and it's very very small amount but that little bit will get you air in your system the way we just flush the system out is the same exact way we fill it up so what you would do is you have a full container and you fill it all the way up to where you see nothing but fluid in this tube and then you crack so if you're turning to the starboard side then you're going to crack the port side fitting on your cil cylinder. You're going to bleed it into a container and you're going to keep turning it until you see no more air coming out of that tube in the back. It should be clear as day. Um, if you see air in it, then you got to keep doing it. And at the same time when you're doing it, you got to watch how much fluid you still got in your, your tank here. Because if you get down to the bottom and you start sucking air, then it's going to flush all that air back into the system and then you're going to have to do it all over again. Okay. Okay, and then you're going to repeat that process for the other side of the cylinder. You're going to turn port and then you're going to open up the starboard side fitting. Wait for that line to be clear in the back, no more air, and then you're done. So that's the way to manually do it, guys. Uh, that way kind of sucks. Chris is like a magician. He's a he's an automotive and marine magician. So he's going to show us the best and most efficient way, but also a way to make sure you eliminate all the air bubbles. And also, can this check for leaks? Yeah, so it'll pressurize the system a little bit so you can check for leaks as well. See. Okay. And so now, since you've waited this long, let me show you what we're talking about. Let's go. All right, so Chris is going to show us here the machine and why you want to use it. All right, guys. This machine is made by Dometic Seastar. Um, and basically what it is, it's a self-contained unit. You just supply power, DC power from your batteries, and then you hook one end right into your steering cylinder, and then you hook the other end into the helm. What's nice about this system is it makes sure that you get all the air out of the system, and it does it in five minutes. Now this machine is not cheap by no means. Um, a reputable shop should have a machine like this. If they don't, then they probably shouldn't be doing steering systems. Sure. We're gonna go ahead and hook this whole system up. The last thing we're gonna do is hook up the battery leads. First thing we got, Y tubing that goes to your cylinder itself. What's nice about this setup is their quick disconnects and they match the quick disconnects that are with the C-Star system that you should already have on your boat if you have a C-Star system. If you got a, a different brand system, um, most brands use that same connector as well as C-Star. So um, Uflex will use that same connector on it as well. So now we got this hooked up and we're gonna just go ahead and open up these valves here. Open them all the way up. You'll, well, not all the way up, just about one turn. One total turn. Yep. All right, guys, we got that. The next part we're going to hook up is going to be at the helm. And it's a special adapter. So this adapter goes in the helm itself. And then we have this tube here that will plug into that. This system 
works the same exact way as what we did with the bottles manually, but it's going to do it with a pump and it's going to do it all in one motion. So it's going to do both sides of the cylinder all at the same time. It's going to pump it in. You're going to see all the air come through the lines and into that container. And then you're going to see it get clear after that. Nice. Okay. Now, if, if they wanted to come to your shop and get the service done, uh, what's, what's the turnaround or time frame that they could get that done? Uh, we can usually do it. It depends on how backed up we are. But if it's just a flush, we can usually do it in a day. In a day. Okay. Yeah, if you drop it off in the morning, we can usually have it back to you in the afternoon. So not a whole lot of downtime, guys. You'll be ready to fish on the weekend. All right, guys. We're going to take this hose now. We're going to bring it up to the upper station. And we're going to connect it up there. And what that's going to do is going to bleed it through the return line through the second station and the top station all at the same time. Um, we will have to turn the wheel at both stations though. All right guys, now we're gonna go ahead and pump the fluid through. And then while it's pumping, you can see all this air coming through the lines here. There's quite a bit coming through these lines. You can see it. That's gonna all have to clear out when it's all said and done. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the bottom steering wheel. And you're gonna see a lot more air come through the system. You're gonna turn it to the starboard and then turn it to the port. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the upper station. Once when we get all the air out of the bottom station, we're gonna turn the steering wheel up the top. Since this has a vented system, um, you can hook the pump up to the top and bleed the bottom all at the same time. Right, now we're going to do the same thing on the top. Turn it. Got to go slow with it. Get all that air out of it. Dual station system like this. When we get done, there's two different caps. There's a vented cap. It's got a little black dot in it. That always goes on the upper station. The other cap is just solid um, it's solid all the way across here. It's, it's just like a block off. That goes on the lower station. You always put the vent on the top station. All right, guys. Um, if you look here now, no more air bubbles coming through these lines. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shut it off. And then we're gonna tighten those fittings on the motor back up. And before you take them off, you gotta have them all tight. So quick disconnects and then put your dust caps back on and this system is good to go no more air in the system all right guys hey so that's a wrap appreciate chris for coming out and taking care of all these issues go ahead and bleed the system we're back up and operational yes we are got yeah. all the leaks out got new caps on it a new seal underneath the helm so we don't have any more leaks down there so as of right now we're leak free hey boat bust out another thousand that's just what is part of the game guys so you got to stay on top of the maintenance that's one of the things with this boat when i purchased it unfortunately it did sit a long time and if you're not running her a lot of these things are going to get weathered and go bad yes they will so but hey if you guys want to get any type of service like this done be sure to check out chris's shop right there in ruskin and uh like i said for all your automotive or marine needs or he, repowers oh yeah Su suzuki Suzu repower suzuki what, repowers you guys saw he did my uh suzuki on my last boat or the boat prior to my last so if you need to get that done he's the guy for your your needs so make sure you give him a call and i'm sure he'll give you a nice salty scales discount just harass him until he does <laughs> all right guys till next time we'll see you on the water